Welcome to another episode of Let's Talk About It Over Cocktails with Carly. I am your host, Miss Carly Baby. Tonight we have the amazing Nosh Entertainment, Nigerian extraordinaire. You don't want to miss it. Stay tuned. Welcome to the show, Nash. Thank you very much. Thank you for having me. Of course. You look really nice tonight. Oh, thank you. Okay. I appreciate it. You look beautiful yourself, thank you. as I always. It. Thank you. <laughs> How do you like your cocktail? Uh, it tastes so nice. I, mean, <laughs> I almost finished it. Like, is there more? Yes. Okay. Yes. Get, get the man more. <laughs> okay. So that's interesting. So um, you actually had a cocktail prior to you coming. What was mm -hmm. it called again? Um, Casuela, Casuela. Everything was fresh. Yes. The lemon, the orange, and the grapefruit. Yes. Like they've they've all freshly squeezed. Like I it's that. so refreshing. Like I like a nice fresh cocktail, especially like during the summer. Absolutely. When it's hot outside, like I need it. Like today. Yes. It was super <laughs> hot today. So check this out. I have this affinity for like a lemonade, a lavender cocktail in the summer. Mm. Doesn't that okay. sound good? Or is that like very girly? Actually, it's, 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 it does. It, it, does it sound really yeah, good? Yeah. Okay, because we're having it at game night. All right. Okay. All right. All right. <laughs> so, All right. But yeah, I really like a nice lemonade slash blueberry smash mm -hmm. with some like Empress gin, you know, to kind of give it that little rat, like lavender look. Mm. So yeah, we got something going on here. With yeah, this. lavender and summer are like yes yeah. it's kind of like lychee like mm -hmm. i love a good lychee martini in the spring right oh, yeah so good you guys lychee martinis are amazing yeah. and le beblu Cat and buckhead shops has like the best summer cocktails oh really oh my god and like colonial they have the best french martini oh the colonial yes i have yes i have yes. the is that the thai restaurant uh, no, it's a French restaurant over in Buckhead Shops. Le Colonial. In Buckhead Village. It's when you first drive in, it's to the left at the top. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. it's yeah. really nice. I really like it. I'm nice. a, I love like a good little, you know, eatery with some wonderful cocktails. Cocktails. Yeah, yes. That's amazing. So, Nosh. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Nosh good. Entertainment. So, yes. tell us something very interesting about you. Where did you get this name from? Um... So yeah, uh, Nosh is of course a combination of my first and last name. Okay. Ni or Shimboejo. So I I picked the first N from the Ni. I didn't need to be you know. Okay. Complete and uh, or Shimboejo. So the O S H. Okay. And Nosh literally means food. You know. Oh, my favorite yeah. thing. <laughs> yeah, that's 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 also an English word. You yes. know, it means oh, we just had a good nosh. You know okay. what I mean? Like, okay. So it means food. Of course, I'm a foodie. Whatever. Yes. It all worked out. So I, I I've been stuck with that name for for a few. But the real name is Adeni Oshimbojo. The entertainment behind it. You know, I host events. Yes. There and yes. There. I. I see you on IG. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I do have a live band. Um. You know. So you sing as well. Yeah, I sing. Yeah. Okay, so yeah. you're a whole like it, entertainment, I just, you, right? So I love so that. it's not not exotic dancing. It, <laughs> <laughs> Until the next show, <laughs> <laughs> because I've heard people be like, "Oh, Nash Entertainment. Oh, what are you entertaining?" Ooh, like, and then you just be doing get your, oh, get your mind off the gutters. Are we gonna have to, have to put you to work? <laughs> okay, so okay, so of course we hear the accent. You guys hear the accent. So tell us where you are actually from. I'm Nigerian. Okay. Uh, from the Yoruba tribe. Okay, so you're Yoruba. Yoruba. Yes, absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. So can you tell us a little about the difference in the tribes? I mean, is that like a long conversation? Because I mean, I'm sure it's not a quick um, elevator. The, the difference in the tribes would be the we do have. You know, Nigeria is a country with very extremely rich culture. Yes. You know, so when you see evil person, you can mm -hmm. tell this is an evil person. What by would their, tell? How would you be able to tell? The it? name alone. Okay. Okay. So what I'm saying? Yes. If you tell me your name, I already know where you're from. Yes. Your food, uh -huh. the dress sense, the dressing, the wow. culture, outfit. Yes. That's just a lot of things. And, of course, the language. Mm. Yeah. So is the language incredibly different? Yes, absolutely. Trust me. You could be a Yoruba person and 
don't speak evil at all or Hausa language at all. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Yeah. That's very interesting. So do you, so typically the gentlemen that are a part of the same tribe, do you guys usually hang out together or do you mix and match the different tribes? Of course we mix and match. We're all together. We're all Nigerians. Um, okay. We just are from different tribes. You know what okay. I mean? Okay. So, so is yeah. there a better tribe than the others? So people like to say, because I've heard, but I just want to know. Everybody's you. tribe is better. Okay, Hausa, so uh, politically correct. Get him another saying. cocktail, guys. <laughs> so, Hausa man would tell you, my tribe is the best. Yes. Ubu, Ubu man would tell you the same thing. A Yoruba person would say the same thing. Like, Yoruba, so, yes. you know, we're all, you know, we're all the best. So, that's very interesting. So, um, oh my God, I have like so many questions. Like, I love this. So, it's, it's really funny because I have quite a few Nigerian friends. Okay. And so, everybody has like their different niche. Right. right. Absolutely. So, so as it relates to commingling, you know, in our community, in the African American community, mm -hmm. you know, we have a lot of like we have separatism, right, within our own community. Right. Do you guys experience any or have separatism in your community? Um, in my community, the only separatism we have would be between the rich and the poor. Oh. There is no middle class. Oh. You see what I'm saying? Like either you getting the money. Or you're or you ain't getting it all. There's no, oh, I'm getting a little, little you know. I'm, I'm a little getting some, it. Some, I'm getting some, <laughs> I'm some, getting you know. what getting so, is good. So that's like the difference between it. So it's so like the contrast is extremely clear, the rich and the So poor. does that trinkle? So how does that equate in the U.S.? So because oftentimes Nigerian men are known, and we're going to get into that, but we'll say that they're known for having money. Right, because we natural hustlers. Like, we know what's driving us. We know, we go getters. We don't believe in any limitation. So, we believe in going to get what we want. So, so but there's some that don't have it. So, maybe the ones that do have it, do are they the ones that come to the U.S.? Or the ones that don't have it, are they the ones that, like, because stay everybody. Stay back home? Yeah, stay back home. Because I know all the Nigerians are not making, they all don't have money. Well, I mean, there is no notion that is 100%. Correct. You see what I'm saying? It's just the study or statistics. Like, right. let's see what's, you know. So, yeah, if we say something, it can be 100%. It's right. never 100%. So, yes, majority of Nigeria. Because when you come from the type of home where your parents don't care and they just want you to go to the college and they're going to choose for you, and what, choose what, for you what you're going to major in in college. That's tough. So Is did it, your parents do that? Yes, absolutely. And you just wanted like, to do entertainment. They would, they would tell you, listen, you're going to wash plates at McDonald's. There's nothing you if you don't do it, that's what there's you're no other way for you. So you have to. So you have to. So it's like a, a norm, Very a routine. And that's why Nigerians are the most educated, whatever. Right. Uh, in you know, I uh, got you, yes. immigrant in right. the US and so, because it's it, that is rooted in the type of parenting or the type of family. So it's the foundation, it's foundation that creates this drive in you guys. You, yes. So you 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 can't afford to be. You know, I'm trying to tell you. I've heard this story a couple times, and yeah. you know, just in conversation with my other friends that are Nigerian, and it mm -hmm. is true. And yeah. I'm just like, you know, from an African American standpoint. You know, we, quite honestly, we don't have a culture. Right. You know, I mean, I think you and I talked about this before. Like, yes. we have French fries and hot dogs. Yes. <laughs> you know, and then, unfortunately, we have the oppressed food. Right. Which, in so many ways, some people may say the slave food. Mm-hmm. Um, which still chitlings. Is, with the chitlings, and I don't <laughs> eat those, okay? Um, <laughs> have you ever tried them? Uh, what? Chitlings? Yeah, I never liked it, though. Like, I tried you, it. I tried was, it, but, you, oh. I don't know. You're better than me because you know, I've never. Yeah, I, I can never. I don't really like pork, so. Yeah, I'm not a pork. pork I don't eat meat, yeah. so that's, yeah. Yeah, so. But I, we don't have a, 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 a staple culture. So when I am around my other Nigerian friends and, like, right. I'm in the, in the space, it just feels so welcoming. But I also feel like an outsider. Right. Because there's a whole different dialect. There's a whole different language. There's, like you said, there's clothes. There's, mm -hmm. the, there's humor even. Right. You know, there's, you know, e and even words to uh, emphasize African Americans. And, and so I want to talk about that a little bit. But it's just, it, it's a culture. And it, I could feel the culture, but I still feel from outside. Absolutely. You know, and it's not like Spanish. Yeah. Where you can learn. <laughs> 
I mean, you can learn it too. Uh, you know? Yeah, okay. You can learn it. There's no language you I can't took learn three it. years of Spanish and it was still rusty. Still. So I can't even. <laughs> Enunciation is really like, I'm like, say right. it again? Right. <laughs> But, but yeah, so, so that is a struggle, I will say, in our community, in which I've spoken to other people, mm -hmm. you know, um, that are of African American. And, yeah, we don't have anything. And I think that we struggle with that. I was actually talking to Trav about that before. I'm just like, we struggle, African Americans struggle with identity because mm. the culture is essentially being created right. f by people that are not great representations of all oh, of us. Absolutely. You know, so you've I got... Agree. You know, you've got the the pound town, right? Mm. Like we talked about, I always got to say it like that, right? <laughs> um, and you've got the, you know, the, the WAPs and you got, and so people see this culture that's mm. created because of course, hello, entertainment kind of drives the culture. Right. And it's kind of like, yeah, all the African-Americans, this is what they like to talk about, mm -hmm. you know? And yep. then for Nigerian or African descent, like people have, you have, you know, Afrobeats. Right. You know, and it's it, they talk about a lot of stuff with Afrobeats, but mm -hmm. a lot of positivity. Right. So it's kind of like, again, as African-American, I'm just kind of like stuck there like, God damn it. Like, I want to be over there talking about the positive stuff, you know, right. like I, I don't want I don't want to turn on, you know, flip Instagram. And, mm -hmm. you know, I, I see the, you know, Tim's is like, oh, you know, and then I flip it down and then Sexy Red's talking about their or booty hole. <laughs> and I'm just like, OK, well. Well, What's that's a connect? contrast, right? Yeah. Where's and the so connection? Yeah. What? So, with with that say, with that said, how does the Nigerian or, or African? Is it fair to say Nigerian or African community? Because um, I know it's huge and it's totally that's different. What I'm saying. Yeah. So, so say I, I, I was gonna say that let's say Nigerian community because that's where I'm from. That's okay, what that's I represent. Fair. Africa is like a it's, continent. Yeah, so I may, I don't want to give, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. so let's stick around. So the Nigerian, what I know, Nigerian correct. community. Yeah. So, um, how do they feel? How do Nigerians typically from your perspective feel about Americans and how they view them or view you? <sighs> <laughs> Remember that's your camera right there. <laughs> Well, um, hmm. I know that's fully loaded because it, yeah. it can be. There's a lot of variations to it. So we'll start with the women. Yeah, there's a lot of variations to it because um, I personally have experienced uh, African Americans, mm -hmm. and each individual that I encountered had a different mm. outlook on life, mm -hmm. and that reflects on how they think. Right. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. And how you think is how you do everything. It, it, it tells a lot of story about you. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? So we view African-Americans as people that were, I'm going to be honest, I'm going to be blunt, yeah. that were robbed off. Mm. Like people that something was stolen from them. Mm -hmm. And <clears throat> they're trying to backtrack mm -hmm. who are we just like what you said we struggle with the identity issues yes. you see what i'm saying so that's how we see them okay but i don't like like a stereotypical way of mm -hmm. saying things like oh all of african course. americans are like this mm -hmm. and that's why i said each individuals mm -hmm. i've in, you know encountered yeah were pretty different so right right so we view them as people that were deprived yes Wow, that's very interesting. Yeah. Because no one's come out, and at least when I've had the conversation, it's just kind of, right. oh, we laugh, and they yeah. kind of dance around it a little yeah. bit. Mm -hmm. um, so I was actually uh, out to dinner with one of my other uh, friends that is from Nigeria in the Nigerian community, and he got a little, we, we were having cocktails, and he got a little loose with the conversation, and he told me a secret word that I guess some Nigerian... <laughs> <laughs> He said, like, God damn it. Everybody knows about that word now. Well, I know exactly where you go. Yeah, right? What, kata? Or? Akata, Akata. Yeah. yeah. And so, uh, and, and please help me understand because or I can give it to help you identify what it is or I can tell you what he told me that it was. Okay, so you tell me first. Okay, me so it, it's called Wakata. No, 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 no. Akata. Akata. And so, based off of what I know, is mm -hmm. it is a form of, it's like Nigerians looking at. African American, like ghetto African American. So Akata literally means a wild panther. <laughs> that could be good or bad, but you see what I'm saying? Yes. It could symbolize strength. It could symbolize aggression. Ah. It could be anything, okay. right? But 
And that's based on what we've seen over the years. Like I said, you know, we've had this conversation before. Like, personally, I do love, like, American clubs. But yes. I don't feel safe. Oh. Because I feel like when some people get drunk, they don't know how to act. Yes. And they don't value life. Pe mm. Before you know, somebody's pulling out a gun. Yeah. Start to shoot people. Yes. So behaviors, character like that could make you think, okay, yeah, this is a wild individual, yes. wild animal. Why are you keep taking the life right. that you can I would agree with that. Is it what I'm saying? Yeah. So I, I, I'll feel safe in that because I know everybody's out to just have fun. Everybody yeah. wants to get home to their kids. They don't mm -hmm. want to argue with nobody. If you take my woman... Please, by all means, <laughs> I don't need to. I don't, you know what I mean? Yes. She's never meant for me anyway. Like, that's the worst case scenario. Instead of pulling out a gun and start killing people, right. you know, or because right. you're a little bit intoxicated and you're out of character, right. you know? And every little thing pisses you off, yeah. you're triggered, you, you know. And these are just experiences and what we I've see. Seen so it. this is not your, this is not his like personal observation of yeah. his feelings. This is what we see what on we ATL see around, Scoop. Yes. We see this on Instagram. Every time. Everywhere. I mean, you know, I there mean, was... Right before we started rolling, we just heard something, and the gentleman yeah. in front of me <laughs> had to, like, oh, Trav in the back what's like, going on? Like, is it time? Yes. Is it time for the... For the I want to say the show fire... Time? Is it what I'm saying? So, yes. yeah, it's, it's just what we've seen around, and, it you is. know, it is what it is. And it's really... It's actually very disappointing. I mean, we could be very... We're being very raw and uncut, and I really hope that you guys look at it and, and deem it that way as well and not take things personally, because this is all informational and knowledge-based. Right, absolutely. Because I don't think that a lot of people will be... Uh, you know, very open with being able to say, hey, this is how we view, right. my community views you guys, mm -hmm. this is what, because we are a broken community. Right. The African American community is a very broken community. Absolutely. And I say that wholeheartedly and I say that empathetically mm. because I'm a part of this community by right. default, right. but I don't identify with a lot of those things that I see on, you know, social media. Absolutely. And quite frankly, a lot of it is very embarrassing to, to, for other cultures to see us right. and, and say, oh, wow, those freaking wild panthers again, shooting up the club, you know, twerking on top of a car on 285, oh you God. know, busting out window. Like we, as a culture, we are wild. Right. And I I don't know, and I talk to Trav about this all the time, like, when is it going to slow down? When is it going to stop? Because it's starting to really turn and be a, a complete cycle for us mm. to where this is who we identify as. Mm. And so when I'm going in and I'm talking to my clients, right. of course, they're looking at me like, you wild panther, are you? In so many ways. I, you have to remember people from other cultures yeah. that do not get to experience you on a daily basis the, what true. they do is they look at social media because they go to that and outlet stereotype you. and they stereotype you right I get and it. so they don't even have to have the experience yep. they just need to see, see it oh. several times right that's it and i have to admit sometimes i'm a victim or i'm i'm guilty not a victim but i'm guilty of the stereotyping mm. and that's part of the reason why sometimes i don't want to go to regular clubs right and i'm just like let's do something chill let's just relax because I don't want anybody to throw any drinks, bottles, shoot, knives, whatever. Right. Because it could be in Buckhead, it, it could be, be in any, Alpharetta, it, it could be yeah. anywhere. Right, absolutely. And so I just, you know, I don't want to continue to ride that horse, but I just want us to do better as a culture, as African Americans, because I don't want other cultures, especially other cultures that look like me, right. to deem me or my people as, gosh, you know, you're just a little bit of a, a wild charity case. Right. You know, and these are, and that's even conversation that I've had with, you know, other African Americans, and they're embarrassed as well. Right. So it's not just a cultural thing, it's a we need to stop this shit thing. Mm. So, right. so let's phase, uh, and, and thank you for being very transparent about that. Anytime. Um, and it was very respectful and very tactful, so I appreciate Any, that. Anytime. Um, so I wanted to ask you about the dating scene in Atlanta, or just period, <sighs> and the stereotypes, because I got questions, y'all. So I'm going to ask you a couple questions about a couple different stereotypes that women in the community have about, you know, Nigerians. Mm -hmm. So um, it's known that Nigerians do have money. OK, that is a stereotype. Mm -hmm. And they will bust the bank open. I'm talking autobiography, you know, Range Rover, Land Rovers, the whole body done, the house taking care of you. I mean, I've seen it. Right. Um, so 
is your culture just that generous or do y'all all just got all this money to throw away? <laughs> so as Niger as a Nigerian or as Nigerians, right? There's something driving us because of what we grew up mm -hmm. seeing. Our mm -hmm. fathers, you know, they were sole providers. Mm. They don't let women do nothing. You can't, I, I, I feel insulted when I go on a date with a woman and you're offering to tip. I'm like, okay, so what are you saying? Like, I, don't, I can't afford to tip. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so that bad. Mm -hmm. So we're so used to that and we're always in that mind space when we deal with women that women are not supposed to be financially responsible for anything Ugh. in your household if you're saying that's your person mm -hmm. and that's why that's where that comes from so we take care of our own you know we take yes. care of our mom we take care of our siblings mm -hmm. friends we come to the u.s boss our tail do whatever we need to do to send money back home mm. you're so. sending you, you a lot of people back home are their lives are dependent on you wow and that's why you can't come out here and just act a fool yeah. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, because you have so much more responsibility other than you the naked eye. Right. So, yeah. So that's where that's coming from. Mm -hmm. It's not like a cultural thing, but it's just a norm that men takes care of the, uh, take care of the family. Mm. That you provide a shelter, you make sure the food is on the table. Mm -hmm. If your woman wants to do it, do something to help you out, that's on her. Mm. But she's never being pressured because that's not her space. Oh, let me tell you. You know that's very different in yeah. the African-American, excuse me, culture. And uh, we actually had a show once before, <laughs> a gentleman who came on. And um, he was very vocal, and, 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 and that clip went viral. He was very vocal about not paying for your bills if he doesn't live with you. Um, do you have any, you have American guy friends, right? Mm, yeah, I have yeah. a few of them. Do you guys have conversations about this? We do. So what are their views on, so I'll, t I'll change it. What do you think about men that feel like they don't want to take care of a woman that they're with? Or they, they feel like they're tricking if they're taking you to a nice dinner or expecting something afterwards? Because I feel like they, um, the product of the environment in which they grew up. Mm -hmm. Probably no father figure in the household. Mm. The mom had to do everything. Mm. Okay. So in their head, they're thinking, okay, it's okay for a woman to kill it too. I mean, there's nothing wrong in it. It's nothing. You see what I'm saying? I understand. But when we do have conversations like that, it tend to be what they, because this is what I tell people, right? I can't blame people for what you don't know. Right. Right? What You only give what you have. Mm -hmm. If you don't have it in you, you don't have it. I'm glad you said that. If you don't have it in you, because there are guys that will have it to and give, just, and they'll play the bait game. Like, well, I, I can do this. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go shopping. Take, mm -hmm. a, I'm gonna go. I want a girl to go shopping with me. I'm not buying her anything, but I want her to see me spend all this money in Gucci. Mm. You know, yeah, and that's different. It, it, that is. <laughs> <laughs> that's a different. That's a different category. <laughs> that's different. You know. So, would you take a woman shopping with you and and buy not ten, twelve thousand dollars worth of not Gucci? Not a random woman. That has to be my woman, though. Okay. And so, uh, uh, quiet on the set <laughs> in the back. <laughs> no, not not a random woman. That has. So, to be what my about woman. a woman that you're courting, that you're dating, and that you like? To take her shopping? Well, not even shopping. Like to take her and do some fabulous things of with course, her. Of course, all day, every day. A woman that you're dating, that you're courting. Yes, absolutely. So are you dating multiple women at one time? or? Um, I know I only date one woman at a time. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, I'm a terrible liar. Oh, you're okay. gonna, maybe you're, you're intoxicated gonna, right yeah, now. Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm not. <laughs> no. But I'm saying, I, 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 you know, I... Oh, you're saying in general, like, I'm not good and, and it's easier for me and, and, to... Yes. So that's good. And I and I admi admire that because I'm a one-at-a-time person dater right. as well. Right. And it's not always the best. You kind of get the short end of the stick often <laughs> because if it doesn't work out, you don't really have a fallback plan. Right. You're just kind of like, okay, well, that was that. And right. It is what it let is. Let me get back out here and Absolutely. start over. Right. <laughs> so, okay, so in... Just kind of like what's popular right now on mm -hmm. social media, because we have to talk about it because that's our news outlet. Mm -hmm. Men, a lot of men are feeling like they don't want to 
offer any any they don't want to overextend themselves because they're afraid what do you because they're afraid of i guess getting the short end of the stick mm -hmm. but what they're doing is they're forgetting the fact that you still have to court you still have to take a woman out right. you still have to essentially try to be chosen right. everybody's trying to be chosen in the Absol dating game absolutely so what do you think about these men that are having issues with uh the whole pang i know you said that it's in them but some guys do it and some guys will stop doing it. Mm -hmm. Do you think it's because of being scorned? Maybe they were hurt? Um, or maybe they're yeah. just selfish or social media is encouraging them to be this. Yeah, I mean, we live in this age of um, where we can easily, uh, you know, like social media influencing everything we do. And social right. media, I tell people, is not even real, right? right? So for this man, I honestly, you know, not in their minds. So I wouldn't really know what their thought. But commonly, though, I know people speak from experience. Mm -hmm. After you probably, you know, felt used by mm -hmm. someone mm -hmm. or you know somebody's dealing with you just because of the benefit or whatever you bring to mm -hmm. the table. So sometimes they're like, you know what? Um, I, I want to see whether you really love me for mm -hmm. me, whether you like me for me. So I'm not right. going to throw money because I'm that type of guy. Mm -hmm. First of all, I don't have to do nothing. I don't right. want to I don't want to impress you. I don't want to push money ahead. Right. I, wanna, I don't want to be like, OK, you know what? Uh, let me use money to bait you mm -hmm. or lure you to me. No, mm -hmm. I want you to, first of all, like me for who I am. Right. Money out of the issue that we will d it's normal right it will happen you see what i'm saying right. but let's establish on a solid foundation first okay so do you being nigerian do you have a lot of women because i see you on instagram i see you on a gram with <laughs> yep. your dior with yep. your cartier yep. okay yep. you i mean you work hard <laughs> yeah so you know you travel you right. know, you, you do, you, you, you definitely fit the profile of what a woman would say right. of a Nigerian. Oh, he got money, you know. And so do you have a lot of women that approach you? Absolutely. Uh, from a monetary standpoint? Absolutely. Well, the thing for me, the good thing for me is I can identify. <laughs> What's an identifier? Like for you? I don't, I can identify a gold. I'm, I'm sorry to use the word. Gold use gold. it. This is what we do on the <laughs> you show. Know what I'm <laughs> I can identify a gold digger. Okay. And even my friends can tell you that I don't like women like that. Yes. I found I found them so unattractive, right. unfortunately. And of course, yeah, I do a lot of women, you know, even in my DM. And what they say in the DM? Just, everybody's just trying to, you know, beg for time. What? <laughs> I've had people book vacation things and just, Really? Yeah, but I'm a busy guy. And of course, you don't have to jump at every offer. Of course. Of course. Yeah, right. I'm very, like I said, I'm very selective. I right. know what I want. And um, I'm not confused about it at all. Okay, that's good. Yeah. So have you ever been kind of tricked, bait and, and tricked by a woman? No. So you really like swift on, on it. On top of it, yes. Are right. you one of these guys that try to, that, that play the, I don't think you are, but play the let me see if I leave this here, let me see what she's going to kind of like one of those, what is it called, Trav, if you're, I'm lost of words here. When you are trying to bait a woman to see what she's gonna do, are you do you like to like test, test women to test them? Um, so not that type of testing though. Okay. You see what I'm saying? I know. I hate that kind of testing. Right. Yeah. That that's. I think that's petty. Like, I think it's that's childish. A, that's very yeah. Oh, the, I left. I left my wallet. Can you pay? Like. Oh, that's no. You're going out. You already know what time it is. First of all, your license lives in your wallet. Right. So why would you go anywhere without your wallet? Right. So that's like that's kind of that's like oh I don't know. But you have a guy, a lot of guys that will be like oh I'm gonna t I'm gonna test her and see if she's got me or I'm gonna have her pay for valet. Like I, I hate that. I don't think that's fair. I don't think it's fair. Yeah, you should. Yeah, you shouldn't test someone like that. First of all, if I'm asking a lady out, I already know that I got it. Right. I don't want her to tip. I don't want her to do nothing. I don't want her to. If she come, I've dated some women that would be like, yeah, can I offer to tip? For what? And well, the thing is, they're just trying to show you that I bring something to the table. But generally, Girl, men. stop. <laughs> but generally, men don't really give a damn it about can be your money. Right. And to it be can, honest. that's what Trav says all you the know, time. Men don't. You could be making 10 million. More than him, he still don't really care about what you're making, to be honest with you. I think it's insulting to try to pay. Well, I don't blame them because some people try to match energy. 
They just don't want to sit there. I'm and, not matching the masculinity. And, <laughs> you pay, baby. And I make got you think <laughs> and make you think, oh, I'm a bomb or I can't hold my own. So for them, they're trying to prove a point to you that, hey, I'm also a solid woman. Or I, I, also, I can understand that. Yeah, I also because already we live in that age now. You see what Let I'm saying? Let me tell you, men, I don't like that. Yeah, I don't. Men do that. make money, women make money. Everybody's like, you know, mm -mm. <clears throat> and Let that's me... really affecting the dating scene. It too. is because now gender role is kind of mixed up. Everybody's right. confused about now, it. Now I believe. Know? I'm glad you said that. I believe in gender roles. Yeah. Like if I'm going out with a guy and he's like, I'm gonna say, you know. The first time I'll be like, you know, you know, he's taking me out. The second time I'm like, okay, do you have it? He's like, yeah. Like, are you kidding? I'm not asking. I'm not right. off offering to, do you want me to pay? You know, I'm not doing that. Now, if something occurs and I'm like, well, I'll go get the valet. I'll get the car. Like, mm -hmm. I have no problem saying, I'm going to just, like, I'm not going to say, right. well, give me your car. Let me pay for mm -hmm. valet to get the car while you go to the bathroom. Right. But I think that as a woman, there's other ways that you can prove relevancy and that, you know, like, I, I mean, not trying to battle the the pockets and whose pockets are heavier or who I can I can hold my own like I listen right. I hold my own all the time I don't need to hold mine and then hold yours absolutely like and I think that people specifically women need to just understand the gender roles about it live right. that soft life yeah. soft life all the girls are talking about soft life on Instagram right that is about gender roles okay you need to live in your femininity which means that you're not battling a man to say okay well i work too i'm a boss bitch boss bitch and soft life does not live in the same no they don't they don't live in the same don't house baby they don't live together they live <laughs> one lives in south atlanta and one lives in <laughs> fucking atlanta. swanee okay <laughs> like it's totally different so Absolutely. if the ladies want to talk about soft life they have to understand the difference what that means and understand what it means yeah. soft li life and boss bitch do not live mm -hmm. together so yep. cut it out okay all right so what do you think about a woman that says that she is an alpha woman and that she pays all her bills and that, you know, I don't need a man for anything? Is that a woman that you would be attracted to or is that a woman you would be unattracted to? That's a masculine woman. Why would I be attracted <laughs> to the same energy? <laughs> right. Because naturally we would bump heads every time. Right. This is what I'm saying? Because now, like I said, the feminine energy, a masculine energy creates an environment. Mm -hmm. to inhabit a feminine energy. Right. So if you're already creating your own world, then live in it by yourself. You see what I'm saying? God damn. You don't you don't you don't <laughs> you need felt that one in you the back. don't need you don't need cuz an alpha male would be kind of like, okay, so are we is this like a competition? Or yeah, what? I'm not right. in competition. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, I'm not in competition with anybody, right? Yeah. So general we have to understand it. It's good, right? Because at the end of the day, I'm going to be honest with you, men love security as well. Yeah. Even though I know I may never have to deploy that resource. Yes. You see what I'm saying? The fact that I know, I don't want to be with a bum either. Right. You know what I mean? I don't want to be with a woman. I know that, okay, God forbid, if something happens to me tomorrow, I can't keep up. I always I talk about this. I need a woman to step in for me. Baby, I got you. Right. I know you're going to get back on your feet. I'll hold it down. Right. You see what I'm saying? Right. We love that. Yeah. It's sexy. You yeah, see what but I'm saying? They, but you gotta we may never need it. Yeah. I may never need to deploy it, but I'm just saying in the event right. of something happening. It's there. It's there. It's Knowing there. that it's there makes you feel... Right. It makes you feel like, okay, yeah. I totally get me. that. Yeah, yeah, because I just... But, but that's where the boss bitches come in, and they're like, I got it. And you're just like, well, But there. then a boss bitch would have to know when to tone it down mm. because they can't be two captains in a ship. Right. Even so, on the plane. Right. You have to have exactly. one captain have and a one first officer. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. First officer? That's what they call them. First officer. Really? Yeah. yeah Co-pilot. Oh, I thought it was just co- okay. Co-pilot, first officer. Okay. Then, Check yeah. me out. I just learned yeah. something new today. Yeah. yeah. So, okay. So that's very interesting. Um, have you ever dated a woman that was of that like bossy type of absolutely and how you want to talk about it because i felt like you really <laughs> look at his whole body language like let me tell you I about mean, this. I, absolutely the thing about me is i know how to check my women i know check how them. Who I, check me, boo? I know how to no and trust me it's not even going to be verbal oh. i move with action right oh so you will know your place try up in the back is this a setup? <laughs> we were just talking about that. No, no, I don't. I've, when you have to explain, talk too much, you listen to power as a man. There's power in silence. Oh, There's yeah. power in actions. There's action speaks louder than mm -hmm. voice. So. Uh, this is powerful. Right. I don't have to say nothing. 
you will just understand, get with the program, and get yourself aligned with right. what we got going on. So that was very powerful. Okay, I felt that in my soul for some reason. <laughs> <laughs> but you're right. When a man has to, you know, say, hey. I'm the boss. Yeah, I'm the boss no, and fight not, you and be talking mm -hmm. and arguing back and mm -hmm. forth. Yep. And that is some bit. It's, yeah, that it, don't like, it's, I don't like that. Right, absolutely. <laughs> like, absolutely. And talk to me. Yeah. You know, and have a conversation with me. Once you, st once you stabilize the foundation, mm -hmm. what's understood doesn't have to be explained. Absolutely. And so people, but people don't realize it. Right. They like that toxicity. Right. I mean, it lives and it has a, a very prevalent place in society. Absolutely. I can't do toxicity. I can't. <laughs> Have you ever dealt with somebody that was toxic on the low? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. How did you do it? Absolutely. <laughs> it was exhausting. It? it was exhausting. It is exhausting. Yeah. Yeah. It, it was really, really exhausting. And you just found yourself coming back into the same thing like you know some people like to be toxic to have like makeup sex though right and i think that's toxic within itself yeah but Absolutely. some people like that you you don't like that um because i feel like you would like that like when we get into argument and then we yeah i, li I like that yeah. you know i have to be i really really have to like that person to yeah, be because to look past. Yes, to be to yes. Because yeah. that toxicity, let me yeah. tell you, all that arguing, yelling, fighting, being d it's, difficult. Oh my God. There's no way that my body will actually even be able to operate. Would, yeah, it's it's exhausting. I, I will be like, I can't, I it's can't exhausting. take it. Yeah. I can't take it. So, okay, so that's interesting. Do you have a question for me? Because I feel like. Um, no, no, you I'm, don't? I'm good. No, you, you like this. <laughs> you like this. He <laughs> likes to be ant. Ask me questions. Absolutely. I mean, you know. Okay. Go for it. That's fair. Okay. So, um, what is your ideal of a date, like a first date with a woman? Are you a, I'm going to take her out to a really nice restaurant, or are you a, let's go for a coffee, or let's do something easy to see if I like you? Mm, well, I think that's a strategy sometimes for men to be cheap. If you're trying to Hello. get a coffee. So, but what I try to do is, first, first of all, a lady has to be, like, comfortable, mm -hmm. right? So, I'm going to leave it to her to choose where you want to meet me for the first time. Okay. And I'm going to let it be, like, is it, a re whatever you want to do, mm -hmm. I'm down with it. But you choose a spot, you let me know what time. Okay. And I will be there. So that's okay. how I go about my first date. That's that's nice. Okay, because you got a lot of guys that do like to do the coffee meetup. Yeah, I mean, I guess they're like, you know, what if I don't like her? So and, uh, so let me tell you. So I am actually one of those people to where if I meet somebody, and I'm on the fence. First off, I'm bait, I'm I'm vetting you over the phone. Like mm -hmm. I'm not I'm not one of these women that's like, I'm gonna just go to dinner and sit across and we'll see if it mm -hmm. works. Like I'm not sitting across the table from you if right. I don't feel any sort of vibe because I like to eat absolutely nosh and, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and I am just like I, I I'm not gonna ruin my dining experience with you mm -hmm. and however I will tell you about a story so there was this guy that I went on a date with he didn't mm -hmm. live in this city mm -hmm. he didn't live in this country actually he lived in another country but he visited here very often mm -hmm. And so he took me on a date, and um, it was very interesting seeing him order, um, not be, be, being very indecisive about what mm. he wanted. Right. And then I looked down like at his hands, his nails were like not clean, but he had a nice suit on, and he mm. smelled really good. Mm. And and but I'm looking at him, and I'm just like, so he's talking to the waitress. Well, what do you recommend? So I'm looking at him like, why? Do you not know what you want? Like, what? you know, I mean. You know, it's just a freaking regular steakhouse. Right. Like, just get a porterhouse or a filet mignon. Like, what do you get? Right. But he's like, well, what do you think? Well, okay, well, how is this? And then how is that? So I was getting turned off no. because I felt like he was indecisive and he couldn't lead. Right. And so then he's like, I'm like, well, are you going to have a cocktail? Um, I don't know. What What do you have on the, like, can, do you have a cocktail? And I'm just like, you don't want, like, a Manhattan or, like, a new Manhattan or old Manhattan? Like, do you not, do, like, what? What do you, the, <laughs> can you fucking lead? Like, and so to me as a mm. woman, I looked at that and I just kind of felt like, I'm actually happy I had this food experience with you because mm. I don't like you like that. Because I feel like you can't even lead me because mm. you can't even pick out your food. Not even your cocktail. Well, I think you 
kind of quick <laughs> to call the shot there. <laughs> okay. For, um, that would be typical me, <laughs> but without the dirty nails. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? Because um, it took me a while to... I, I, I play safe. I'm a very routine-ish type of guy. Okay. You see what I'm saying? I would go to a restaurant for a certain... That's what that I do. I've, that I've tried, yes. tested, and trusted. And you right? know, yeah. So when you take me to a new restaurant, okay. I'm trying to figure out, oh, what kind of, so how do I combine this? Trust me, that menu be confusing sometimes. Okay, but let me tell you, so that's fair. Right. So if I say we're going to go to New York Prime. So I already know it's a steakhouse. And so you already know where it is. Right. Uh, I've already, or you've already made the reservation. Mm-hmm. Uh, you should look at the menu if you've never been there before, ahead of time. Sometimes you don't have time for that. <laughs> Sometimes, I mean, is... I mean, like, it's not like I'm about to take an examination. <laughs> so what I'm saying, like, why am I looking ahead of time for the menu? So or... that's fair. That's fair. The only reason why I think someone would want to check the menu is to see the price and how expensive are they, is the place, okay. is the spot. You know what I mean? Like, let me see a plate of food. Let me see what it costs. So already you're in your head. Okay, by the time I go, maybe 300 bucks, 400 bucks. Okay, box, well, if you're going on a date, you might right. as well say this is going to be about 300 bucks. You, so, you see what I'm saying? Between so, two cocktails, a yeah. dessert, appetizers, right. entree, you're, right. I mean. Yeah, but I don't, okay. think, I don't think anything is wrong when you don't know. You can ask. Okay, you know? that's like, very interesting. I do that all the time with my lady. I'll tell her, hey, Order my food. Okay, Give so that's some, different. Yes, like you know what I like. Yes, yeah, so and that's different. Would, right. But if I was on, um, say, for example, first date, yeah. I would go through the menu and just pick the simplest okay. thing in there just okay. for the sake of, okay, she doesn't know what I like yet. Okay. And But I do that all the time, though. Like, okay. I'd be looking at the menu and trying to figure it out, like, okay, what do I want to get? And also, I look around. To see. And I look at people's foods and I'm yes. like, what is that? Okay. I want that. So I do a lot of client dinners. And so oftentimes I go to different states mm -hmm. to have dinner at different restaurants. Right. So I will look at, you know, I have food, you know, requirements. Yeah. I don't eat a lot of stuff. Mm -hmm. So um, I will look at the menu and determine, or if you say, hey, let's go to this restaurant. I'm going to say, oh, what's the name of it? And I'm going to look at the menu right. ahead of time right. to see if there's something that I want to eat on the menu. Because nine times out of ten, there mm -hmm. may be something on the menu that I can't that eat. That you can't eat. So, <laughs> <laughs> you know, or somebody may say, oh, let's go to this one restaurant, mm -hmm. and they've got, like, frog like frog legs mm -hmm. and escargot, and mm -hmm. you're just like, oh, what? my In God, what am I going to freaking eat? Because yeah. I don't want any of this stuff. Or, like, pork belly something or another. Yep. Just kind of like this restaurant. So, sidebar, mm -hmm. this, re the, this hotel that I stay at when I go to D.C., right. their restaurant down at the bottom, they, they serve that. Frog right. legs, mm -hmm. escargot, pork belly, you know. And I'm right. just like, what am I going to eat? No, nothing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, it is, it's very interesting. But, um, so, yeah, this is really fun. I really, I really am enjoying this. Thank you for having me. Uh, of I'm course, myself as well. of course. So let's talk about marriage. Okay. And the culture. So I'll tell you what a girlfriend said. Mm -hmm. uh, actually, I'll tell you what it has been said. Mm -hmm. um, I quote, Oh, I like dealing with those Nigerians, but you know, they're not going to marry us, but they like to play around with us. End quote. Mm. A Nigerian man. Hmm. Or I like to play around with American women, but I don't. We're not going to marry them because we don't take them seriously. Right. So, what do you think about? Is that a true statement? That's a fact. Mm. That's so a tell fact. me why and Nigerian men do not take American women seriously. Okay. Uh, before we go into that, um, like I said, I've seen a successful Nigerian American marriages. Okay. So what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. No notion is hundred mm -hmm. percent. It depends on the individuals. Mm -hmm. right? I've experienced people differently, mm -hmm. but generally speaking, generally speaking, that is a fact. Okay. Is it because of the, how the women are after one, maybe one thing predominantly? Um, it, is it the lack of, you know, uh, structure? What, what do you think it is? There's a lot of variations to it. And I think all variation, right, is rooted in culture a clash mm. you see what i'm saying mm -hmm. everything that's the summary that's my own understanding what i could pick is going on so every man 
want some type of security as well mm -hmm. in a woman, mm -hmm. right? Security doesn't mean I want you to be financially stable. This mm. as commonly stated. With women. Yes, yes, yes. Like, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm. When a woman is saying I'm looking to have, you know, security, mm -hmm. she's, of course, she wants a, the guy with the bread. Yeah. You know, I don't have to self life, whatever. Mm -hmm. But for men, we do need some type of security as well. Meaning that as a Nigerian man, I want, I love family. Everything is centered around family. You know, family yes. and all that. And we don't feel like. Uh, I don't think, uh, how do I put this? I don't, I want to word it the right way. I don't want to come across I offensive. understand. So I'm trying to look for the best word. But what I'm saying is this. Let me give you an example. Okay. I've dated African Americans mm -hmm. that when they see your family come around, they have a problem with it. Oh, why? Why? I don't, they just don't want nobody around. They, in my house, or my this, oh, this is my house, or blah, blah, blah. They, people are not free to access you again mm. because you're married to an African-American. Of which, if you were with a Nigerian woman, we, you've seen us. Yes. We're very hospitable. We're yes. very accommodating. We, want, we love people. We cook. We want you to eat our food. Yes. I want some of that jollof rice you see, right now. <laughs> so you see, hungry. You see what I'm saying? <laughs> yes. But this you don't get from an average African-American woman. Okay. Average African-American women are... Think, they think about themselves first. That's fair. You okay. see what I'm saying? Yeah. They don't want you to, like, and this is from experience. Of course. You know, they don't want you to do for other people. Let me give you another example. We were oh. at a party. Okay. And I know this lady way back from home. Mm -hmm. We've known from home. So, you know, we spray other parties. Like, yeah. we spray on the bills. Not Wait, money? A, Yes. Oh, yeah. Did you bring your sprayer? I mean, I didn't think we were going to be dancing. <laughs> <laughs> but this is not like in a disrespectful way, like you spray at the strip club or whatever. It's so just you guys spray money. in appreciation that you deserve everything that money can oh, buy or whatever. Oh, let me tell you. When my friends came to my house <laughs> mm -hmm. at the last party that we had, mm -hmm. I was like, I'm going to a Nigerian wedding. You know this. Yeah. And so I'm like, I'm going to the wedding, and they're like, oh, they're going to throw money on yeah, you. Spread, and I said, yeah. are they going to throw money on me? Yeah. He's like, yeah. <laughs> so that was like, oh, my God. So yeah. they take money out of their pockets, and, and they, they just, started. in the house, in the kitchen, Absolutely. they start throwing all this money Absolutely. on me. And I'm just like, oh, this yep. is so good. I just love it. <laughs> Absolutely. So anyway, I'm sorry. So yeah, so the, my friend approached me. Of course, I was with my you know, girlfriend at the time. Mm -hmm. And she said, oh, no, I need money to spray. Mm -hmm. So I reached out mm -hmm. you know, in my wallet. And I gave her a hundred dollar bill. Okay. And she had a problem with it. She didn't want to spray the hundred dollars. No, 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 no. She had a problem. Oh, with you giving the money to her. Oh, you sleeping with her? Oh, you doing this? Oh, you doing created like almost a scene. Mm. Like do I know this you know? Person? Huh? <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> no. So, but what I'm saying is, for a Nigerian woman in that scenario, wouldn't see it like that. So there's a lot of things why you wouldn't. You would. So it just feels one. it just feels secured and safe to just be with your tribe. That's understandable. You see that's what I'm understandable. Saying? It's almost like a person that is dating out their race. Yes. So you don't understand what to meet. You're learning them. You yeah. Know? So it's a cultural shock. It's just like yeah, like dating yeah. someone that's maybe like either oh, how about this Nigerian and then uh, Jewish, yeah. traditional. How do you mesh that? Yeah. yeah Orthodox. Right. So, so it's kind of like, how do I do this? But right. I can understand. I think that there is an understanding that mm -hmm. needs to, to, to transpire. Right. Um, if I'm with someone and they dig in their pocket and they give somebody else $100, mm -hmm. like, I'm expecting to kind of, like, understand, like... What's going on? Like, is it... I mean, I'm not trying to hold on to the money because typically mm -hmm. if you're giving $100 to somebody, there's a lot more where that came from. Right. So it's not like, oh, don't give away my money. Right. But it's more like if... Like for example, if you if I were in that space, you would you would tell me this is what we do. That's what now, I did. Now if the chick turns around and she goes, "Thank you," <laughs> then we got a problem because it's like what? It's not a problem. It's more of like, okay, I know what do you, you mean didn't if see she this turns around? because women what they will do is they will they will play the man against the woman that he's with. 
How? So for example, if this woman comes up to you and she goes, oh, I want to spray. Can you give me a hundred dollars? Can you give me some money? And your lady is standing here. Mm -hmm. She doesn't acknowledge your lady. She takes the money. She does some little gesture and she mm. walks away. Mm. It can be deemed as disrespectful to your woman. Absol absolutely. So if this woman is asking you for money, you're like, yeah, no problem. And it's the man's responsibility to turn to his lady and say, I'm sorry, did you meet my they girlfriend? Already, they already love her. They already knew her at the time. They oh, greeted, actually. she was just being ugly then. Yeah, they, they knew her already. Like, she was just being, like, I guess she's not used to that. That why would you be giving a woman money? That's all she sees. Oh, yeah. The picture is you're giving a woman money, a hundred dollars. Maybe you guys are sleeping together, you know? They just, I just feel like most of them that I've dealt with do have that extreme right. way of thinking. Like, anything, they can't really think positively about anything. Or think that, okay, this, maybe I'm tripping. Maybe I'm overthinking it. Do maybe you have that's, a type? I do. Mm. Absolutely. So, okay. So, it's good that you have a type. Yeah. Do you attract feisty women? When they come with me, though, they slow down. Because you start that silent treatment on their ass. <laughs> well, not silent treatment. It's just because I know who I am. And I know that I, we're not going to mix things up around here. We're going to have a better understanding of gender roles and things like that. Okay. So I appreciate you being alpha, whatever you do. Awesome. Right. I like you. I, you know, like, but when you say feisty, it depends. Like, So feisty, like this woman seemed a little feisty, mm -hmm. right? She was kind of like fiery, fire, right. fire type right. woman. Mm -hmm. So typically those type of women are going to give you problems and there's a type associated. Right. Absolutely. So that's why I'm like, do you have a type? Of course you have a type, but then... There, in the type, there's a spe specified mm -hmm. line item in the type. Absolutely. And it could be feisty, somebody that's the alpha, even if it's not even about money, it's just You don't control. even have to be alpha to be feisty. I've, I've, I've seen women that are not even alpha females. Oh, they just got attitude. Problem. And then they just, yes. <laughs> that's just attitude. They just problem. either insecurity, trust yes. issues. It could be anything. Right. And they could give you help. So, based so tell on me, that. with this said, do you think that you can actually marry a, an American woman? Um, so right now I'm going to be honest, my last relationship prior to that, I belonged to the school of thought of just play with American women. Mm -hmm. When it's time for you to find a wife, find a Nigerian woman because mm -hmm. she understands me. She knows my food. Mm -hmm. we, I don't have to teach her a lot, but I met someone that I was dealing with for a long time mm -hmm. and she sold me, I saw a different side of American women. So mm -hmm. I kind of shifted a little bit. A, a little I'm tick. still very tick, tick. right, like <laughs> yeah. So I'm still kind of like, uh, okay, well, you know, they're people, like. They're, but why do they? But why do Nigerian men play? Why is the thought to play with American women and then marry their own? What is the novelty? Because American women are fun. They fun. They expressive. They very free. They are very like you know. They'll and smoke Nigerian weed with women, you. Okay. They'll do you know. Sex is bomb. They'll take you to <laughs> another. Is, they'll take you to a bomb. You know what I'm saying? Like, uh, women are not trained like that. They think the men will judge them. Mm. So they hold back on a lot. Interesting. Because they don't want to be seen as promiscuous or wayward or so. so then how they do will, you marry that? You go from the fun sex, the being able to chill and do, and then you just go to go, boredom. That's a wife. That is the reason why a lot of Nigerian men yeah. be outside in these streets. Yes, absolutely. Ah, I didn't bust a Vinci's code wide open. Absolutely. I mean, like I said, not every notion is 100%. Of course. Everybody's, so not all. This is know. not all. This is some. Never <laughs> yeah, we're 100%, not saying absolutely. definitely. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Yes. So yeah, for the most part, yes. Interesting. They love the fun, but if their wife brings that out, they'll be like, oh, who teach you that? Where did you learn that from? <laughs> Have you been? Are you are you are you a hoe or something? <laughs> let me find well, out. Let me find out what you've been doing. Right. So because they're like, okay, you're not supposed to know all those things, but you love these things outside from. But I have other. So I've had other like Nigerian girlfriends, mm -hmm. and some were, you know, they were out there. And you know the funny thing. And they and they were single. Nigerian women love that thing too, but guess what? They would rather do it with. Uh, a male African American. Interesting. This is a thing, right, in the community because you know, women. Of course, you can't move like a man. You have to be right. careful, right? So what they do is like they will get that. The same way we seek that outside our culture, they do the same thing. 
But when it's time to settle down, they put it together, and then boom, be with a coyote or with right. a denny or. But they won't show that to. Right to that to their prospect. So that yes, absolutely. So then, how is sex with a Nigerian woman after well, you've had fun? Like don't figure it out. Y'all gonna be honest with each other what y'all like, or y'all gonna keep playing the game? They'll figure it out. <laughs> Damn, that's real cutthroat. <laughs> I mean, you yeah. either have a culture and you have like this some place of belonging, yep. and family and all this fun stuff, mm -hmm. or you can just be in the streets and yeah, having fun, absolutely, living your bestest Best life. life. Yep, absolutely. With the the absolute non-guarantee of being able to find somebody that you can take over to the other side. Right. So that's very interesting. Hmm. Yeah. So I can't believe that that, I'm, I'm processing all of this, y'all. This is knowledge for myself, too. <laughs> and guess what? I've had the opportunity to talk, you know, with, you know, of course, Nigerian women yeah. who believe that American men give the best sex just the same way we say american women give the best sex because right. like i said they're just expressive you know like they're not holding back they just you know that's very interesting yeah but, but somebody's got to get to a point where but we are very where we come from we judge you by everything oh they'll judge you by everything your edu level of education the money you have your status everything we judge we're very judgmental but so they're not free to express themselves. And I was just about to say, there is a lack of freedom. Yes, pretty much. Societal norms. Let me tell you, I went to a dinner. Um, was one of my Nigerian friends had a dinner party. I went. Mm -hmm. And the husband sat here, the wife sat on the other side of him. And of course, like, I'm going to be honest, some of the women are not always very nice to mm -hmm. American women. Right. Uh, me. <laughs> <laughs> so she's giving me the stink eye, but then her husband start slowly starting conversation, getting in my conversation, getting, mm. next thing you know, he's talking to me wholeheartedly. Mm. So then she's like rolling her eyes. She's looking, I'm just like, She oh. Nigerian? Yes. <laughs> and I'm just sitting <laughs> here like, I, I don't, don't want don't, no don't problems, ever, nor do I want your husband. Don't leave your drink on the table. Oh, go to the bathroom. oh <laughs> God, don't you worry, because I thought about that too. And I was like, not going to happen. <laughs> uh -uh, not in my house. So I was just like, I don't understand why oftentimes Nigerian women are very aggressive towards American women. Now this makes a lot more sense right. because we are that fun wild card that, that lures their men away from them away from, from them and so it keeps them single much longer right. because their men are fraternizing with you know american you know women right. goddesses right and there's because this happened where i had a girlfriend mm -hmm. and they two girlfriends and they were single and they were just really not understanding why they were not married they were always going to weddings like damn near every other month the americans no they yeah, from nigeria yeah okay. from nigeria and uh, one of them recently just got engaged and she's getting married. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, she's mid to late 40s. Mm. And, you know, it's, you know, I mean, congratulations to her. But I remember right. that time it was very strenuous, it was very hard for her. Mm. You know, but I don't understand why a lot of, I mean, I get it now, but it's just a lot of dislike for the African Americans. Right. When we, we didn't choose to be here. Right. Like, we were fine. Like, I, my ancestors were fine in Benny. Right. Like, they were good. <laughs> like, Absolutely. you know, and yeah. so, um, and by the way, I am 35% Nigerian. I found out my ancestry. Oh, okay. okay. So you're part of us. Am I? Evidently. Ev evidently. You, you evidently. You have a lot of Nigerian <laughs> friends. You like our food. You like, yeah, the, you know. Yeah, I so. really like that. And I had some moi moi. Oh, see. Do you remember a long time ago, you made moi moi? Yep. And, I, and you were like, try it. And I was like, uh, ooh. I don't know. What so now it? you like it? Well, I had some different moi. <laughs> <laughs> And I was like, I like this bean cake. I like it. It's good. But I do. I love. I love jollof rice. But not all of them mm. are created equal. Right. Some I had some, and it had no taste to it. But it. it and looked, you've had some that are like. Boom. Oh, spicy! It was yeah. just everything, and just it was. Right. It was a lot. But mm -hmm. yeah, I can't get into all the other foods because I don't eat meat. Meat. Oh, so okay. there's a lot of saturation. Yeah, we eat a lot meat. of meat. Yeah. Yes. We, are, we eat a lot of meat. Um, but yeah, it's 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 quite interesting. But um, I really appreciate you coming on and being very transparent about this because this is some big shoes that you're stepping in. Yeah, thank you, you know, for having so, me. Yes. So tell us and everybody where they can find you. So let them know. 
Um, well, you, know, you can follow me on Instagram at Nosh underscore entertainment or Facebook, uh, Nosh Joseph. Um, you know, um, I'm right there. You all up in there. All up in there. <laughs> <laughs> I like swimwear. No. <laughs> so thank you so much for watching. Uh, we really appreciate it. Um, of course, I am Cocktails with Carly. You can find me on Instagram at Cocktails with Carly underscore underscore. And of course, the show page which is Let's Talk Over Cocktails. And then, of course, on YouTube, you can find us at Let's Talk Over Cocktails. I'm sorry, Let's Talk About It Over Cocktails with Carly. Um, shout out to Trav in the back because I always mess this up. So <laughs> <laughs> I love you guys. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Talk to you later. Bye.